right, well, so we got uh, Elvis here. We got Zach. Uh, what's up, guys? How you guys been? Doing good. Just hanging out. I'm doing good. Same. Yeah. Good to hear. So where are you guys uh, each at right now? I think, Elvis, you're here in uh, Columbus. I know, Z, you've kind of been going back and forth with uh, uh, Michigan. Where are you guys each at? Zach, why don't you go ahead and go first? Uh, I'm in Michigan right now, but the second this stream ends, I'm headed back to Columbus uh, for a couple days, maybe a week. So uh, I've just been going back and forth, trying to get some things, some clothes, um, just go back down there and hang out with my brother. So I've been bouncing back and forth. Nice. Elvis, you've been here pretty much, haven't you? Yeah, I'm staying all the time here in Columbus. Um, I went twice to Michigan to see Manny, uh, just spent like a week, week and a half playing a little golf and all, all that fun part. Um, otherwise, yeah, I'm just sitting home here in Columbus. Nice. I hate to tell you on the stream you just gave up a goal, unfortunately. But um, <laughs> how is the uh, – you say going up and seeing Manny, how is the golf game going? Oh, good. He's a good teacher. Uh, he teaches me a lot, obviously better than last year. Uh, but still, <laughs> I have to work on it my on my driver. Yeah. Z, do you get a chance to play much? I don't know if you're a big golf guy. I know Elvis has kind of picked it up here because of Manny. Yeah, I uh, I play almost every day. There's a course that I joined a couple years ago that's right next to my house. Um, I could probably hit a driver to the course. That's how close it is. So every day I'll go over there. I'll hit golf balls. I'll go to the range, work on my putting. Um, it's been a tough start to the year for me in terms of golfing. <laughs> but the last couple of days has been getting better for me. That's good. Yeah, it's been like the one thing to kind of keep me sane and get out. And I, I think uh, – Elvis, I saw you were over at Dublin the other day. I was there the same day. Sorry I didn't run into you. Sorry? Uh, on, on Monday over, over at Dublin, I saw you got a chance to get out and play. So uh, how'd that go? Oh, it was good. I lost all my balls. so <laughs> <laughs> It was a good day. It was just one package of balls that I lost. It wasn't two. So it was good. No, um, it was good. It's really nice course. I really like here in Dublin. Uh, in Columbus, I played just in Dublin, so I don't know how, how are the other courses. Uh, but usually, yeah, I played in Michigan with many. So this is basically my two, three, two, three uh, golf courses that I played. Yeah. You know, if, uh, if fans have any questions they want to uh, throw in the chat here, uh, I'll go ahead and try to ask these guys as it goes on. Uh, obviously, the thing that's kind of <laughs> nice about this is uh, we're, we're streaming these games because we know the Blue Jackets now are going to play the Maple Leafs here whenever uh, hockey gets back going. Uh, first question that kind of someone's put in question I was just going to ask you guys are you guys excited to play Toronto uh, it's, it's two months away but now you kind of know what's next for you guys yeah I'm excited I think uh, I think even with no fans in the building just playing Toronto a team that uh, I think all fans like to watch with their star power up front I think just knowing everyone's watching that game it's it's going to give us some juice going to give us some life even though there's no one in the building um, and they're a talented team, and I think we match up well with them. They're they're pretty offensive, and I think we're more of a defensive-minded hockey team. And uh, and like I said, I think it's going to be a good matchup for us. Yeah, Elvis, you just made a big save on the stream here on a breakaway. Uh, what, what's kind of your reaction to get a chance to you know now knowing you're going to play the uh, Maple Leafs when you get back? Um, well, I don't know what to expect because I never played against them. Um, I just seen the game when I was in, in Toronto. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what to expect, but I'm really excited and, and can't wait for it. Yeah. What's it been like? I mean, it's got to be hard because, you know, hockey is a job for you guys, but it's also your passion. Uh, these last couple months not really having a chance to play at all. Uh, it's, been, it's been a little bit almost like summer, but at the same time kind of weird just because you never knew the next time you're going to get back out there. What's it just been like for each of you guys? Kind of How much have you missed it over these last couple months? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I think it kind of ended so quickly. You didn't really get a chance to to kind of enjoy the end of the season or, or the playoffs or the fans. It just kind of ended one day, and the next thing you know, everyone's going home and the season's over, and it's, it's been almost two and a half, three months since this has all happened. So it's been a while. Uh, it's going to be probably another month again before we start getting back together as a group, but uh, definitely missed it, but you kind of have to just take it in stride because there's nothing we can do about it. Yeah. Elvis, have you ever gone this long without playing or without even maybe even thinking about hockey? Well, obviously I'm missing. <laughs> I'm missing the, the, the players shooting the pucks on me. Um, yeah, you, you don't know what to do during the day. I mean, uh, it, it's not like at a summer break, like when you know that you can go to the gym twice a day and you get ready for the next season here. 
you you go to the gym if you if you if you can if you have the the chance to go but still you know that the season is not over so your feeling it's kind of weird and uh, and, and yeah you you know that you're gonna have to play and you're gonna have to finish the season and then it's gonna it, it's experience of the life I think in my first year yeah. in NHL and it's I think it's I'm not gonna say it's nice experience but. <laughs> Still, experience of your of your of your career, uh, and you're gonna have something to, to to tell to your to your child. Yeah, no, it's something none of us have ever really been through. And we have a question here. Actually, we have a couple questions from fans here in the chat. Um, we have one. Uh, do you guys prefer Columbus as a hub city? Or are you prepared to play anywhere? So I know it's kind of uh, no one knows how it's gonna go. But would you guys want to stay in Columbus and play, or do you? Does it really matter uh, once you once we get back to play here and see what happens? Um, I don't really care. I mean, I, I think what I've been hearing is if, if Columbus is a hub city, we probably won't get to stay at home. Um, I think Columbus would make a great hub city for, for obvious reasons. Um, but at the same time, it'd be kind of weird if we were playing in Columbus, but we weren't staying at home. Um, you know, obviously, if we could stay at our houses or stay in our apartments, it'd be great. But I just don't think that's going to happen because I think everyone they kind of want to keep everyone together in hotels and uh, try and quarantine everyone together. So um, I guess we'll see what happens. But I think, you know, Columbus would be a great hub city for the NHL. Yeah, we have a, a question from Michigan hockey fan. Here's one I want to ask you, Zach. Uh, how often do you talk to Zach Hyman? Uh, are you guys going to make any bets on the upcoming series? He plays for Toronto. Uh, you know, you guys go back to the old days at Yost. I don't know. I remember a whole lot about him. But uh, uh, what's that going to be like for you guys? Yeah, it'll be fun. I actually haven't talked to him since uh, since this format came out. Uh, I played in this Fortnite charity thing a couple weeks ago, um, but we didn't really talk too much. He was pretty busy, um, but no, I'm excited. I actually didn't even think about that Michigan connection there, playing against him in, in these playoffs. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, no, that's it's gonna be some bragging rights if ever comes out on top in that series. Yeah, no, for sure. We've kind of joked about this over the years, but like obviously you played Columbus and went to the University of Michigan. I mean, what's that kind of, I mean, how often do people bring that up to you as you go about your day-to-day -day life here in Columbus? Yeah, I mean, no one really brings it up, um, you know, that much. It's kind of just the, I'll be, I'll be walking around or at dinner or something and someone will say, go box, uh, just to try and get at me. But it's, it's all friendly. It's been a lot of fun, I think, you know, being a Michigan guy in Columbus, it's uh, it's made me appreciate the rivalry more. Um, you know, I know how passionate Ohio State fans are now, and going to Michigan, obviously, I know how passionate fans are there. So it's been awesome with that rivalry, especially when it comes game week between those two. Um, you know, it's uh, it's an exciting week. I get a lot of tweets and comments <laughs> on Instagram about it, but it's like I said, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, we got another question here. This one's gonna look uh, for Elvis. Uh, uh, when are you guys going to start growing playoff beards? And uh, Elvis, what's yours going to look like? Uh, Elvis, have you ever been a big, uh, been a big beard guy before? Uh, not a chance. I'm sorry. <laughs> so it, it's not growing. I mean, yeah, all right. I'm going to try to not shave till the playoffs. I'm going to start today, but you're going to see the result. There's nothing much. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> Z, you got kind of the playoff muzzy going right now. How's, are you going to go with the full beard when this, uh, when the series comes around? Um, I mean, yeah, I think you kind of have to. I think my mustache is going to be ahead of my beard, though. Um, my beards are always horrible. I can't really grow one. I just trimmed the mustache because I've, I've had it since the day that we were supposed to play Pittsburgh. So the day the league shut down, I started growing a mustache, and it got so long I had to shave it. Or I had to trim it last week. Um, you know, I've just been I've just been kind of keeping it just for fun during this, this whole quarantine because I never have one, so... Uh, once playoffs come around, though, I'm going to try and grow a beard, but it probably won't be great. Now, have either of you guys been able to get a haircut? I know that's kind of the, the you know, pretty much everything was shut down there for a while. So, uh, Z, you look like you've kind of, uh, it's kind of grown on you there a little bit. Yeah, I got like a, a mullet type haircut. I don't know. I was kind of bored, so I just shaved the sides. And um, I got a mustache, I got a mullet, and uh, quarantine's <laughs> been crazy for me. So, I think I'm going to keep both of them for the playoffs. Nice. I think that'll be a good look. Elvis, have you kind of just been letting yours grow out? Uh, I went to the hairdresser here in Columbus, so I was, I'm good. Okay, well, that's good. <laughs> yeah, it looks pretty good, actually. You got the good flow. It's pretty much your normal look there. <laughs> so we got another question from uh, a couple times here from one of the fans. Uh, how are you guys training for Toronto? And obviously, 
uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a couple months away. So, uh, you know, still got plenty of time to kind of get back in shape. But what's, what do you guys been able to kind of do to at least uh, keep yourself in shape right now? I've uh, just been going on runs, trying to work out uh, whenever I can. And uh, it's been it's been different for sure, shooting pucks, um, rollerblading, and obviously staying in shape's hard right now with uh, pretty much everything in Michigan being closed. Uh, our stay-at-home orders till June 12th. So uh, there's really nothing uh, open for, for me to do. But um, I know with this phase two that they're talking about and, you know, hopefully getting back in the rink in Columbus here soon, um, you know, that'll just help things out. But it's, it's definitely been difficult. But for me, it's just been uh, doing what I can, going on runs, bike rides, um, just some fun things like that. Yeah. And I know, Elvis, obviously, you can't really recreate guys shooting pucks at you at 90 miles per hour. You kind of already said that. But I think some people kind of have visions of, like, going, like, uh, Happy Gilmore going, you know, having the, the shooting the softballs at you. Uh, but was there anything you've been able to kind of do to at least keep yourself uh, uh, somewhat ready to go for this whole thing? Um, I was – basically every day trying to stretch that's obviously uh then uh, i went to the rink i i asked the the coaches the trainers in columbus if i can borrow some dumplings so i took those ones uh i was trying to work out here in my in in, in my living room as as much as i could uh same thing running uh, i don't have any chance to bike so when i was at manny's place i was biking because he has a bike. Uh, now it's already the second day that they open at the gym in my place. So I'm going out yeah. every morning here in uh, in my place at my gym. Yeah, is it? You kind of mentioned it, but how weird has it been just not having anybody shooting at you for this whole time? It's kind of weird. I mean, uh, we bought. There is like a gun that is shooting the ball for for the dog, and, and then my girlfriend she was shooting the, that ball against me, and it was kind of fun. It was I was missing that feeling. So uh, then I was thinking to buy the the machine that is shooting the tennis balls, but then uh, I was thinking it's hard to to bring it back to Europe, back to Switzerland. So uh, I'm gonna just buy it straight right away there in Switzerland when I'm gonna be this summer. Yeah. No, I say it kind of sounds like that. I've seen it Happy Gilmore when he stand there and they're uh, shooting the baseballs at him. But uh, uh, you know, you got to do whatever you can to get ready. Uh, actually, appreciate all these questions fans are uh, sending in. Uh, Want to get to these before I kind of go to, down any other roads? But uh, we had a couple questions. Uh, you know, Nick said on the Nick Felino did a teleconference yesterday and said, "Thank God it's probably not going to be a normal torch training camp." But uh, we got a question here. Do you think it'll be like a normal camp, or do you think it'll be better or worse? Or what do you guys kind of think about what torch has got in mind for you guys when you get back on the ice? um whatever it is it's not going to be easy um you know i think the first couple of days are going to be similar to his camp and you know in the fall uh, right, right before the start of the regular season it's going to be a lot of skating i don't know if we'll do a run maybe we will i'm not sure but um i think the first few days are going to be pretty tough probably get some scrimmaging going and then um we don't have much time you know once once things get get rolling they get rolling quick so uh, I think it'll be a little bit easier than his normal training camp, but it's definitely not going to be easy by any means. Yeah. Elvis, is, you know, you playing being a goalie, obviously things are a little bit different for you uh, as far as kind of getting ready. Uh, but what do you think that whole thing's going to be like for you? Obviously, you got to start seeing pucks here at some point. Uh, uh, are you kind of excited to get back out there whenever that's going to be? I have no idea because it's my first year here, so I don't know what to expect from the torts. I don't know how are the, his camps. I mean, I, I live with just one. Uh, in the summer so and it was really hard yeah but uh i really don't know what to expect but like you said i'm goalie so for me maybe it's gonna be a little bit different it's not gonna be the same as maybe for z because uh, they're gonna do different stuff i'm gonna do different stuff with manny uh so i really don't know what to expect but uh, i'm ready for everything i mean i'm missing the hockey i want to get back on on the right shape and sooner as possible it's, it's gonna be better yeah. How much has Manny been able to help you out with this whole thing? Because I know you guys are close and, you know, you can't really do a whole lot of on ice stuff, obviously. But, you know, what you've seen him a couple of times. You said you've gone to Michigan. Just what's he been able to kind of do uh, to help you out and just kind of, whether it be mentally or physically as this whole thing's gone on? Well, about the hockey, like, really, he didn't, we didn't really, it's not a, like we talk or we work together. Uh, he's, for me, going to Michigan, it was, it was more like, taking a break from Columbus, get like kind of little vacation, having yeah. fun golfing and all that stuff. But still, uh, he's working out every morning with his wife uh, and I was joining them. So 
uh, I was trying to, to steal his weights because he has the weights. So I was doing the weights when I didn't have the weights here in, uh, in Columbus. And like I said, biking. Uh, never had a chance in all this time biking. Uh, the two times that I went there, so I had the chance to bike there, and uh, that's what I did. Yeah. We've got a question here from uh, 95 Big Hoss. Uh, how nice is it going to be to have so many teammates back from injury? Uh, obviously, we've talked about that all year. Uh, but uh, specifically with you, getting the chance to get back out there with Jonesy, that's got to be pretty exciting for you. Yeah, it's awesome. It's uh, I think having him back, having Bjorki back. Uh, I don't know the timetable for Anderson, but maybe him. Uh, maybe tax. I don't really know, but just to have some of our big guys back, that for sure are going to be healthy. Uh, I think it's huge, huge for us, and uh, I think for the whole league, everyone's going to be healthy for the most part. I think it's going to be really good hockey. Everyone's going to be rested, um, so it should be exciting. But, but yeah, no, I think for our team, it's definitely going to help us. Yeah. Question from uh, here: uh, Who are you most excited to see when you get back in the room? Uh, Elvis, uh, would that be Gavrikov for you? I know you guys are pretty good friends. Uh, he's been back over in Russia. Is emailing him a little bit back and forth uh, here. What's it going to be? You excited to kind of see him and all the rest of your teammates when you get back? Oh yeah. I mean, uh, I did a couple of weeks ago an interview in Russian, and, and I thought it, the language was pretty much I, like I had little issues to talk about in the Russian. So I right away texted him why he left me because I have nobody to, to who talk in Russian. So yeah, I, I need him back. I need the Russian guy. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Z, who are you looking forward to seeing? Uh, I think I'm most looking forward to seeing Bamstrom. Uh, he's hilarious. <laughs> I just think him coming to the recovery. I'm, I'm missing him too, yeah. Yeah, he's just funny, like, just having him around. He's a clown in the locker room, and um, just his personality. I think it, uh, guys like being around him, so uh, I'm excited to see him again. Yeah, that's actually one of the questions we got here. Who's the funniest player in the room? I would have not guessed uh, Bemmer. Uh, I know there's some guys who are pretty good. I think Corpy's kind of secretly really funny, but from your perspective, who are some of the guys that make you guys laugh all the time? Uh, savvy. Savvy. Yeah, Savvy. Savvy's our, our team clown. He's so funny. I think consistently he's the funniest one on our team. Um, I can see that, yeah. But there's a lot of guys that are funny and have good humor. I think everyone, uh, especially in our locker room, it's it's pretty light, and um, there's a lot of guys that, that make guys laugh, but I think Savard takes the reins on that one. Yeah. Elvis, same for you? Yeah, yeah, exactly the same. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Uh, uh, we got some questions here. Uh, we can see here. We're looking uh, through this list. We actually got a bunch of questions, which is actually pretty cool. And, so, and Jack could say, vote Savvy for Best Beard. Make sure you go and vote for the Fan Choice Awards here. Uh, so it's been a year since the Blue Jackets uh, swept Tampa Bay. Obviously, I think you guys have uh, kind of gone through the memories of that, kind of going back and looking uh, when that's been kind of played here over these last couple of weeks. But for Z, you know, obviously you're a big part of that. You know, what was your memories as you look back? You know, it's going to be playoff hockey whenever you guys play again. Uh, so that, that'll be kind of probably brought up quite a bit. What's kind of your memories of that whole thing? Yeah, I actually, uh, I saw a picture yesterday, and um, it was of me and Jonesy, and it was the crowd. And, um, you know, just kind of thinking back on that and, and looking at that picture, it was unbelievable. Just our fans, our city, uh, how loud Nationwide was. Uh, it was the most, you know, fun hockey I've ever played was that series. Just how we came together as a team. Uh, I think a lot of people doubted us in that series, and um, you know, I'm, I'm sure everyone doubted us in that series. But for us to to come out and play the way we did, and uh, and just do that for our city, and, and like I said, for our fans, it was unbelievable. Yeah, and Elvis, that was you know you were around, but you know obviously not having a chance to play at that time. But just being around Columbus and seeing kind of the fans and seeing the the team go through that run, what was that like for you uh, last year? Uh, it was huge i mean it was really beautiful uh the games with the when uh, when we played against the, the tampa at home the crowd it, like i had the chance to be part of the fan and it was it was crazy like it was it was really beautiful unbelievable uh i think it was really great help as well for the team uh to give that the, that was the real fifth line i think and yeah. Uh, and uh, from my first experience to see my first NHL games, it was was crazy. It was really, really nice. And uh, it was a great experience to live it. And, uh, and of course, I wanted to live it to be on the ice one day. And uh, hope one day it's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, we got a comment here from Stinger, uh, our favorite mascot, who also says to vote for him for best mascot in the Fan Choice Awards, uh, but also says to vote for Elvis 
for best selly. Uh, I know you and Nick are up in that, uh, the voting for uh, best selly around the league. Who came up with kind of the, the jump hook? Because I know there's been a couple times you've almost kind of run Nick over uh, there, but uh, was that something you came up with, or did he come up with it? How did it all come together? Um, I know that Bob was hugging Nick and Corpy as well, and I was losing so many games, and then finally I got that win, and it was New Year as well, so uh, I was really happy, and I don't know, I just took my emotions, I just threw it away the stake, and I just wanted to jump and hug him, because, like, finally I win that game, and uh, and yeah, and from then I, we just keep doing that, and it's fun, kind of, I don't know, we have to invent something new, but still, I like it. Yeah, I'll be looking forward to see if you can come up with anything new, but uh, did Nick ever come to you and say, you're going to kill me? Because there's been a couple times, like that Vegas shutout, you pretty much almost you know, knocked him down. You almost took him down. No, nah, he was complaining more about that my, my jersey is out with the Gatorade and split, <laughs> and when I jump on him, all that stuff goes in his face. So he was, he was complaining about that. So I was trying to not jump that high anymore, but still, when you, when you get a win, you're excited, excited so you just jump. Yeah, no, for sure. And, and actually, one of the questions here is, uh, what were both of your favorite games of the year? Uh, I'd have to, maybe for both of you, it might be the same game. That New Year's Eve, you know, Z, you had a hat trick. Uh, Elvis, you got your first win. Is that one, as you look back on the season, that kind of stands out? Are there any other games that, that pop into your head when you think about it? Um, that's a tough one. Um, that New Year's game, obviously, was fun just because it's New Year's. Um, just a big game, big crowd. Um, but I think my favorite game, um, I don't know. I'll have to think about that one. Elvis, do you have any that, that you have in, yeah. in your mind? Well, one obviously is the first win, but my favorite favorite would be my first shout out in Vegas. Yeah, I really, really like the Vegas rink and well, the city. But um, it was it was fun and it was nice. I think I think one game that, looking back on it now, that just like the emotion of our team and the bench, and how big of a win it was was uh, was Vancouver at home because it was so late in the season and we were having yeah. that losing streak and we came back. Um, I remember when Bamstrom scored, our bench like. I think I almost jumped over the boards, and it was crazy. So just games like that are a lot of fun where you kind of battle through some adversity, and, um, you know, we were on a little bit of a losing streak. So that was that game was really fun. Yeah. Elvis, you mentioned that Vegas game, and obviously everyone knows, you know, Elvis, Vegas, it all kind of it, – it's all so obvious. But, like, w did that really mean a lot to you going into that game, you know, having the name Elvis and going out there and getting that shutout? I mean, it almost was like a movie script the way it came together. How cool was that for you? I just before the game I was just thinking it would be fun if it would happen that I make I would make the shout out and because of the name of the city uh, so I, in my first year in NHL so I just thought about it then when I saw the three three minutes left those were those were my toughest three minutes ever when I played because I, I, it's always like this when you get to shout out and there is the last five three minutes yeah you you are just waiting the bad goal the bad bounce the bad deflection something is gonna happen and then i was just i just forgot about it and it just was playing and then i remember somebody was shooting the puck out and then so i almost get out from the ring because i wanted to keep the puck and mm -hmm. uh, i was kind of a little bit nervous on that moment but otherwise yeah that was i think that was a fun part that because of the name and and my first first shot out of the nhl yeah, and then you went up uh, and went ahead and, you know, had shut out some four of your next seven games, so you had five out of eight overall. I mean, what was that like for you? I mean, did you feel like you were in the zone? Have you ever played as well as that whole little stretch was going? I mean, that had to be so much fun to be a part of. I felt good. I mean, I felt, I felt inside feeling was great. I mean, the last time when I had that, that great thing, feeling was the playoffs in Lugano uh, when – when I wasn't just thinking about the game, I was just trying to enjoy the moment and let the team to, to do the job, to score the goals and the win. Um, and, and it kind of was, I wasn't think like I wasn't that happy about the, the shutout because I had so many losses before. 
and uh, and I had to win the game. It didn't matter if it's shut out or not. And anyways, even if it's shut out, it wasn't all me. It was team. The guys blocked the shots, and the guys the guys did their job in in front of me. So it, it's it, it's thanks for them that I did all those sh uh, shutouts. So. In overall, for me, it was more important to win the games, win the points, uh, because I was losing really a lot of games this year in the start of the season. So I had to kind of get back uh, on the track. Yeah, and no, for sure you certainly did. And now here's a great question from Cam the Jackrabbit. Got to ask this one: uh, Pineapple on pizza? Yes or no? What do you guys think? Yes. Uh, <laughs> I've never tried it, so I don't know. Oh okay, yeah, I'm not a fan. But you like it, Elvis? Yes. Okay, well there you go. We, that's a uh, we got one yes and one abstention, so I think that pretty much uh, that's a yes then. Uh, so that's a good one. Although I'm not a big fan, it, it's kind of a, it's just too weird for me. But uh, you know, you gotta you gotta go what you gotta go with. So uh, there's another question here. I know I wanted to ask. I was trying to find. Um, yeah, we had someone ask uh, about video games and games that you guys may have played growing up. Obviously, we got the stream going here. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Toronto has claimed game one uh, in, in this uh, simulation that we're doing. Uh, but you know, with with the game kind of going on here, are there games that you guys play growing up? What are your kind of your favorites that you guys have played uh, throughout your lives? Um. Well, I mean, more recently, I've been playing a lot of Call of Duty. When I was younger, I used to play a lot of Call of Duty. Uh, I think a very underrated game that I'm happy is coming back is Tony Hawk. Um, when I was younger, I used to always play those skateboarding games, and I just think they're a lot of fun. And I saw that they're coming back out with it for. For Xbox and PS, so um, I think that's the game I'm excited to play again. Nice, though, that's a good one. Uh, Elvis, what are some of your favorites? Same Call of Duty uh, when I was younger, the Tony Hawk and uh, Super Mario, I like it. Mm -hmm. And um, well, NHL, I like I always to play NHL. I started to play FIFA, so kind of fun as well but uh, most favorite game probably is Call of Duty yeah you've been playing with Tex haven't you yeah we played together yeah. when he was here in Columbus okay. yeah who's better you or him the result says that me <laughs> <laughs> there it is so yeah you can't lie so you know it's, uh, I'm sure it's a lot of fun to get to do that with the guys I know you guys have played a lot of uh, uh, NHL here as well um, over the last couple months, and I know Elvis, you had a chance to do it with the fans. You know, you've done it for a couple of good causes as well. Uh, obviously, you're a hockey player, so you know, it, for for me, when I play NHL, it's like you know the chance to actually feel like I'm playing like a real game. But you, you actually are NHL players. Uh, uh, is there anything you can you can get from these games, or is it fun to play for you guys just because of the fact that you are players, or uh, you know, what's kind of the experience like as an NHL player, kind of doing these simulations? Um, you know, I don't really ever think of it as like we play in the NHL and now we're playing the video game. I just like playing the game. I think it's fun. I think the competitive edge kind of gets brought back when you, when you play online. Um, like I hate losing to people online. It's the worst. Uh, so I just think things like that. It's, it's fun about the game. Um, but yeah, I never really think like, you know, we're, we're NHL players playing the game. It's just a game I've always played. So I just, I just enjoy playing it. Yeah. What do you think Elvis? Same exactly. I think like, you even didn't realize, I mean, yeah, you know that you are in the game, but you're really not, like, you're not focusing about that. You're just trying to enjoy the game. And, and even even if you are playing for Columbus, and, like, example, if me and Zach were playing, we're somebody going to play with a different team. So I would choose uh, Nashville because I always played with the Nashville. Even Lugano, when I was, I was always using the Nashville. As the team, nice. I don't know. I don't know. I like I, li I like how they are playing in the game, so they kind of is my favorite team when I'm playing uh, the NHL 20. Yeah, is it ever weird? You know, when I covered Ohio State, the guys were always so excited. You know, football guys that they could actually see themselves in the video game. Was was there ever a moment where the first time you saw yourself in the game, you're like, wow, this is pretty cool? I remember earlier this year, Elvis, you were kind of complaining that they got your rating pretty low, but uh, is, is that just kind of cool though to be a whole a part of the whole thing? <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I was even complaining because uh, I didn't have my real pads and my real colors. That was the first time when I saw myself. So, <laughs> yeah, no, um, you just uh, you go in the settings and, uh, and you, you can everything you, you can change that. So uh, that's what I was doing. I was just changing my pads. 
<laughs> yeah, you got to look legit, right? You got to look like yourself. Yeah, I mean, Z, you, you were an NHL player, you know, age 18, basically. I mean, was that kind of, you probably grew up playing this game. Was it cool the first time you looked and thought, there I am? Um, I think the first time I played against the Blue Jackets, like someone else was them online, and then like you kind of hear your name. That that was the first time it was kind of cool. Um, the first time I played as the Blue, the Blue Jackets, it I don't know, it didn't really feel like anything. But then like the first time I was someone else playing against them, that was kind of cool. Yeah, Elvis, do you ever play the game as a goalie? Like I know you can kind of log in and be, you know, it's different than obviously kind of playing the whole thing. Have you ever done it that way? I tried, but. I'm really bad. Like I, I don't know how to use the goalie in the game. So there's really like I don't understand it. I should practice probably, but still, you you, you can't understand it. Yeah, no, I know. Totally I know. I have a friends who are really good. Uh, that it's really hard to score on them, but I don't understand how you do it. So no. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a totally different setup. Um, we have a question, another one from uh, Big Hoss here. Uh, Elvis, do you have a lot of friends and family back home that watch the games live? Uh, you know, obviously there's a big difference out uh, there in uh, Latvia. I think it's about six or seven hours behind. But, you know, how often do people get a chance to watch you, how, your, your family and stuff like that? Um, well, my mom, obviously, she was watching every game. So she was kind of leaving the time during the day like I'm leaving. Uh, for her, it was really important. So she, during the night, she was always watching the games. And during the day, she was mostly power napping, sleeping. Uh, my brother, same thing. Uh, he was waking up uh, earlier in the morning, uh, watching the game. Then he was working out, and then he was going to the to the uh, to the, his work. So uh, for them, like for my brother, it was easier. But obviously, my mom, she's older, so maybe for her it was tougher. Uh, my grandma as well. She was uh, looking the games during the night, so for them it was hard, and they kind of are missing as well. The games watching them um i know only only like good time for them was when we were in la uh anaheim and all those places so for them the time change zone was kind of easier it wasn't anymore that night night uh, was kind of evening so for them it was easier yeah yeah no for sure and now here's here's the big question of the whole thing uh z how's the new pup uh z how's our bow doing <laughs> He's good. He's huge. He's, um, he's, I think he's projected to be like 70, 75 pounds and he's four months old and I think he's already like 30. So it seems like every day we, we wake up, he gets bigger, but, um, but he's doing great and super happy to have him. Yeah. I, we did the kind of the story earlier this year about him, but, uh, things he's gotten a lot bigger since then. Um, I think I said you were, you had him over the weekend kind of swimming. Uh, what was that like for him? I had to be pretty fun. Yeah, it was hilarious. It was his first time going in the water. It, he, like, I read that they know what to do, like, naturally, like, instincts, how to swim, because we've never had a dog before, so um, yeah. kind of first first thing for everyone, but um, but he was so funny in the water. And, and then when he gets wet, he looks so much skinnier than when all his fur is, you know, all fluffy. So um, we've been having a lot of fun with him, trying to, you know, do new things and have new experiences, but um, but he's been good. Uh, Elvis, how's Kobe? He's good. He's good. He's, I don't know, uh, he's afraid maybe of the water because I never saw him going by himself in the water and swimming. So uh, I think maybe when when I was back in Switzerland, uh, when he was like really young puppy, because I, like I'm not like throwing him, but like I put him in the water by himself. Uh, maybe that was my mistake that he got kind of scared because like I saw Z, he yeah. was with him together. So maybe I did that mistake, but I don't know, like when uh, when I was in Michigan to Manny and he fell in the pool, he was like swimming easily and he got out and he wasn't like scared or anything. Uh, same thing, uh, it's crazy. They are really fluffy, but when they get wet, they, they're really, really skinny and they're funny. Uh, so, so yeah, he's, he's good. Yeah. Has he been happy with kind of everything that's going on to have you around the house more? I think not really. <laughs> I think that he <laughs> wants that we leave him alone sometimes at home. So uh, he, even when we are going to groceries, he's not anymore barking and, or complaining about anything. He's really enjoying the time sleeping on the couch alone. Uh, <laughs> so probably he's not really happy that we are all the time home. 
Yeah, it's, you never know how it's going to go with uh, with them. And we have a question from uh, this uh, Stinger CBJ. He keeps asking questions. I'm not sure why. Um, but it's, uh, on a scale of 100 to 100, how much do you miss me? Now, that's kind of a ridiculous question out of the mascot. But, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> how much do you miss Stinger at this point? And, and everyone uh, with the Blue Jackets as well. Yeah, I mean, I think just, uh, you know, seeing Stinger during games and stuff like that on the big screen and just down below before and after games. Um, just I just miss everything about going to the arena and, and hockey season. So um, I don't really have a choice, but I miss them 100 out of 100. And, um, you know, I think I think right now we all do just with, with everything going on. Yeah. Elvis, anything you can possibly add to that answer? Very much the same. I can add 101. I'm missing. Oh, uh-huh. <laughs> you beat me on that one. <laughs> Get that extra brownie point. No, that's uh, that's awesome. Uh, and someone asked Elvis, how are you liking Dublin? I know it's got to be a, a different atmosphere up there, but you know, obviously, you, you spent so much time in Lugano, and then come to Columbus. I know you were downtown for a while, and now you're up in Dublin. But just what it's been, what's it been like for you, just kind of getting used to Columbus? Uh, first time spending a lot of time in America, I'd have to imagine uh, this year. So what was that whole thing like for you, just kind of getting used to being over here? Um, I, well, I, I really like more Dublin than living in downtown, uh, but that's maybe because uh, I grew up with my, uh, with my grandma in a, in a factory, so uh, in the farm. Uh, so I was all the time away from the downtown, and I like when you have green, you have a lot much green, you can go easily somewhere for a walk or something, and and that thing you don't have in downtown, obviously. So uh, I like that that more here in Dublin, that I can go with Kobe wherever I want uh, without the leash because I'm not afraid that there is cars or something. There is a cars, but not so many as in downtown. Um, and that yeah. that's the part what I like more here, yeah. Yeah. Here's something I've always wanted to ask you. I just thought I was been curious about Elvis because I know uh, you use those, those bottle of vapor pads, and they've got to be like as far as rebounds go. I mean, you're shooting those things all over the place. Uh, is that something that you is this, was that like a strategy decision from you? Is you wanted to have pads that kind of you know shot out those rebounds, or is that just were you just comfortable with those pads and decided just wanted to start wearing them, or how that kind of all come together? Um, well, no, that wasn't my decision. I mean, uh, when I, when I try, when I got the the bowers, I just realized that they are really different from the other pads. Uh, that's different material, different pad. Uh, you just have to use to it to that that rebound from the pad what you have. Uh, but that, that that feeling I feel just when they are new, uh, when they get older, like when you get used them more, uh, they they are not giving those those rebounds that quick. Um, but that's that's just about the feeling uh, to understand how to put your legs and, and that, that's all. Yeah, uh, Z, I know you, you kind of did some uh, changes over the off season. You went to Warrior this year and ended up scoring 20 goals. Uh, I don't know if that was a coincidence or not, but for you, uh, what was it like just to get through a season where it felt like almost you know it had to feel like, especially from a goal scoring aspect, that everything was working for you. Uh, what was that like for you to just kind of feel feel that comfortable throughout the year, especially offensively? Yeah, um, I switched to Warrior over the summer, just tried some sample sticks, and I, I really liked the way they felt. Uh, I liked the way I was shooting the puck. Um, so I figured I'd switch to it this season. And, um, you know, I don't know if it was a stick or my summer training or a little bit of luck, probably definitely some luck. Um, but I felt really comfortable this year, especially offensively. Um, getting the goal scoring areas when I got out there, I just felt comfortable with my stick, with my shot. Um, it was just, you know, trying to find ways to score goals and, and, uh, and it worked for me this year. So I don't know if it was a stick. It probably had a little bit to do with it, a little bit to do with the lock and, um, you know, some, some hard work over the summer. So I felt comfortable this year offensively and uh, hopefully I can I can bring that to, to the playoffs this summer. Yeah, and I guess we can wrap it up here. Uh, thanks for all the fans who kind of chimed in with questions. I just want to ask you guys, you know, obviously so much hockey ahead for both of you, uh, you know, and so many things you guys have uh, done well and so much and you provided the fans over these last couple uh, uh, years you know, for you back and this year for Elvis. But just how excited are you to get back on the ice and, and just kind of get back at it and, and see what it's all. You know, obviously we know it's Toronto now. Uh, you know, we don't know exactly when it's going to be or how it's going to work out. But there's got to be a, a really cool feeling of being like, okay, now we get a chance to get back out there on the ice at some point in the future. You want to go, Elvis? <laughs> yeah, you go first. 
Um, yeah, no, I mean, I think we're really excited. Like, like we talked about earlier, I think the season just ended so abruptly, and it was that most fun time of the year with, you know, 12 games left, playoffs, playoffs coming up. Um, you didn't really get a chance to enjoy it. So I think, you know, knowing we have a format in place now, there's still a lot of things to get ironed out for us to be able to play, but I think just kind of having that excitement again, knowing who we're playing against, uh, knowing it's the Maple Leafs, um, you know, talking more about when camp's going to be, you can kind of get that excitement going again, and uh, I think it's something we've missed. So, um, yeah, I don't want to speak on behalf of my teammates, but I think I can confidently say we're all pretty excited to, to get things going. Yeah. Elvis, pretty much the same thought? Pretty much the same thing. I mean, like Z said, it just happened in one moment or another that we finished the season. Uh, we even didn't have a chance to say goodbye to each other. I mean, we didn't know for how long we're going to we're gonna leave. Uh, same thing. Uh, I, I'm missing the team. I'm missing the old boys. So for them, it's the same thing. We are just excited to get back, and, uh, and we just can't wait that moment. Yeah, for sure. We got we got one question here under the wire, Alan, asked you guys uh, from Cross OG. Those were guys funniest or weirdest moments in the NHL. Does anything stand out of the second half to laugh about over the years? Um, you're kind of breaking up there. I couldn't really hear you. Yeah. Uh, the question is from Cross uh, OG, and it says, "What's your funniest or weirdest moments in the NHL?" Funniest or weirdest moments in the NHL? Yeah. Okay. Um, Gavi's block shot in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> he just got killed there. <laughs> that was the weirdest and funniest moment. I remember watching that on TV because I was hurt at the time and I was on a trip and I was I was in pain watching those block shots. <laughs> but he's, because he's because tall. even like I even remember the noises when he was making that when he was getting the puck. He was really <laughs> suffering. <laughs> That's so funny. That's awesome. Yeah, poor Gabby, but no, he, he, uh, he did a job there. That's the cool stuff. Uh, yeah, Zach, Z, uh, or Z, Elvis, uh, thanks for doing this. I think this was pretty fun. Uh, this, the games were going a little better. It seems like the guests are kind of struggling in our stream here, but uh, hopefully uh, things will be a little different when you guys get back on the ice. And uh, thanks for uh, doing this, guys. Yeah, Thank you. thanks for having us. So we're going to talk a little bit about what's coming up with the NHL season when, when it does return to play, if and when it does return to play this year. Uh, we're going to have – Jeff Sabo is just going to answer some – a few questions that I have that some fans have had that we've seen on social media. 
uh, we want to make sure that we really address all of that if possible. Um, one of the biggest things would be with the cancellation of other seasons, what have you really seen uh, as far as the Jackets, it, how players like Liam Foody or some of the AHL Cleveland players could affect uh, the season moving forward? Yeah, especially a guy like Foodie would be uh, great for the Blue Jackets to have here when the season gets going again here against the Maple Leafs, and it seems like he's going to be able to be out there, uh, which is pretty cool uh, for the Jackets. You know, we saw him come in in February and play really well. Uh, you know, makes his NHL debut, makes almost a couple things happen offensively. Then they go in the second game against Buffalo, and he played like 18 minutes at night, and I mean, played in overtime and stuff like that. So, I mean, that just goes to show you uh, already John Tortorella sees uh, a lot that they like about him. Uh, so you, I, Liam Foody will be eligible for the Jackets. It would be pretty cool if they can get him out there and, and add to the forward depth because it looks like he's a guy that's already uh, pretty much ready to be an NHL player. So you know, that will help a bit. You add him to the, you know, obviously all the injured guys that the Jackets had throughout the year will, will pretty much be all back at this point. Uh, Z kind of said earlier, not sure about uh, Anderson with his shoulder injury and then, you know, Brandon Dubinsky being out. But everyone else, uh, that long list of guys like Cam Atkinson and Oliver Bjorkstrand and Seth Jones being back, uh, you know, this will be a, a pretty stacked Blue Jackets roster uh, when we get back to playing hockey, which uh, is a pretty exciting sign because uh, we never really got to see this team fully healthy and, and playing well at any point throughout the season. And so uh, if, if they can do that, I mean, this has to be a little bit of a dark horse to see uh, some, some pretty exciting things happening here in the playoffs. Oh, yeah, for sure. And then you also, I mean, we saw the Jackets kind of went on that hot streak where Elvis, you know, five shutouts in eight games. Uh, the team really playing well despite injuries and then slowing up a little bit toward decelerating towards the pause uh is this almost like a good reset button for the team and how could it affect some of the other teams who were hot approaching the playoff race you know the, the end run there yeah it's interesting because you know and it was interesting hearing uh z say that the game that kind of stood out to him this year uh as far as just being one of the most fun games was that vancouver game at home where they you know come back from three one down uh, win that game five to three, and then go out on the West Coast, and actually, you know, Western Canada play some pretty good hockey there. So it's almost like the Jackets have kind of found themselves again. Uh, but you're never going to complain with this time off what it can do uh, just to get all those like injured guys back that we were just talking about. I think that's going to be a great thing for this team uh, to kind of have a full roster. And, and even on the stream right now, Alexander Texier is scoring. It'd be great to have a guy like that back, uh, and Dean Kukan, and you know the the whole list of guys that were injured. So. Uh, on the whole, I think it was probably good timing for the Jackets to have this whole thing kind of develop the way that it did. Uh, and now coming back, and Nick Foligno said yesterday, that, you know, the teams that are going to win coming back out of this are the teams that can find their game the fastest. And, and this Blue Jackets team found its game uh, throughout the year. They learned how they had to play uh, to win hockey games. They learned defensively, you know, what they had to do, you know, the way that they had to battle, the teamwork that they had to have to come together and win games. And so if, you know, now that they kind of know that, uh, and if they can, you know, put it all back together again and, and find that game really quickly, uh, you know, I, I would almost rather have that in a way than, than maybe a team like the Leafs who were just so offensively uh, built and who kind of have to, you know, they're, they kind of have to click a little bit offensively. Uh, well, you know, will they get to that game or will the Jackets kind of get to their defensive game? That's what the whole thing's going to come down to. But uh, if I'm a Jackets fan, I got to feel pretty good about how this whole thing's going to develop uh, just based on the way that, you know, being healthy and the way that this team played throughout the year. Yeah, so you mentioned the the Nick conversation yesterday. We actually dropped the link to that story in the chat, so if you guys want to go ahead. The first link we posted there uh, is Jeff's story from yesterday after that conference call. What would you say were the main takeaways from that first call since the league you know, announced the plans to return, talking to those guys? I think, one, uh, Nick is excited to, to battle for the Stanley Cup, and I think you know everyone who's a, a hockey fan or a hockey player, uh, it's been weird not having playoff hockey over the last couple months. This is the time of year. Uh, where it really would have been heated up. I mean, you would have had the end of the season in March, and then you would have had, uh, you know, Stanley Cup playoff hockey throughout April and May. So it's been weird to not have it. Uh, so, you know, if we can do everything safely and we can get these guys back out there and play, uh, the chance to battle for a Stanley Cup. And, and Nick even said, you know, to, in his mind, there'll be no asterisk uh, on this cup, no matter who wins it. I, and some people have kind of talked about that, which is weird to me, because the way he said it, you know, you, you've just got to go out there and play and win. Uh, and, and whatever the situation is, you're going to have to battle for the Stanley Cup. And, and so uh, it doesn't matter if it's after a long layoff like this. It doesn't matter if it's a lockout short season. You win that cup, uh, you've gone through the battles and you've won it. And he's ready for those. And I think that's going to be pretty exciting uh, for him and for the fans to do. But, you know, the other thing he talked about a lot was just making sure uh, that this whole thing can be done safely. And I think that's obviously got to be a huge uh, part of the whole thing. 
you know, with testing and all these things and just, you know, tub cities and all that, uh, the number one thing that has to be focused on is making sure the players and the staffs and, and the communities that these guys are going into uh, are going to be healthy and, and able to kind of go through this whole thing without any sort of worries. And so, uh, you know, we've seen it kind of start happening around the world, you know, with the Korean baseball and German Bundesliga. And I think even uh, there was some soccer from uh, Costa Rica on ESPN last night. So we're, we're starting to see uh, how teams are able to kind of put this all together. The English Premier League is coming back. So, you know, we're kind of getting back to normal here, but we just got to make sure everything can be done safely for these guys, especially, you know, some of these guys have families and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, that was something Nick talked quite a bit about. And, you know, hopefully we can get it all figured out and get ready to go and get it done. Yeah, Commissioner Gary Bettman did stress that, you know, several times throughout that first and the return to play announcement. You know, safety is the top priority. Um, going back, you mentioned uh, the someone mentioned asterisks around some of the records around this. You think about the Stanley Cup playoffs. In my mind, it's already a 16 team or a 16 game gauntlet you have to run. You have to win 16 games to win the Stanley Cup on a regular year. Now with this, you know, the addition of that play in round, a best of five series, does it almost make it more difficult? Uh, you get obviously you get more teams with the chance to get into to get in, have their chance to throw their name in the hat for the Stanley Cup. But is it a little bit more difficult? Yeah, I mean, you're going to have to win five series now for the Blue Jackets to win the Stanley Cup, which is quite a bit. But the, the thing that's kind of interesting is, you know, you always hear teams who are battling for a playoff spot coming down the stretch. You know, if they make it, they say, you know, well, we've been playing playoff hockey for the past, you know, two weeks or two months or whatever it might be. Uh, and so it's really not all that different in that regard is that the, uh, the Jackets were going to have to win games down the stretch to make the playoffs with where they were. Uh, so at, at the end of the day, yeah, they're going to add – a series, I guess, that you're going to have to win. But you're going to have to win if nothing had happened. You're going to be playing in March and April and, and having to win those games. And so uh, kind of the proverbial, we've been playing playoff hockey for two months or whatever it is. Uh, it, now it's going to be reality is you're just going to add another playoff series and you're going to be playing playoff hockey for an extra round. So, you know, it's going to be tough. It's, it's tough to beat the Leafs. Uh, uh, you know, this is a team that can score a lot of goals. This is a team that has a lot of talent. Uh, they've certainly uh, got a huge fan base that's going to be behind them. But uh, you know what? You're going to have to play those games down the stretch. And in fact, you're going to have to play Tampa down the stretch before everything kind of got put in the pause. So uh, it, it's it's functionally a little different, but at the same time, it's it's really not all that different uh, for the Jackets uh, going back out there and starting this new uh, this this kind of new frontier we're in for this year with everything that's happened. Yep. And then we got so as we're kind of coming down here in this last simulated game, we'll we'll start to wrap it up. I do have one more question for you though. There's been a lot of talk about. Uh, you know, hub cities playing in two different cities. They're leaving the list long because obviously they want, you know, the most recent information when, whenever they do resume play, you want to go to the two safest cities. What do you think is strengthening Columbus bid to be one of those hub cities? Is it the chiller rinks? Is it, you know, taking action as one of the first States uh, along, what along those lines do you think is really giving Columbus, you know, keeping the name in the, in the running for being a hub city? I think it's a little bit of everything, including the things you just mentioned. Obviously, there's a, a really a great uh, supply of rinks here. Uh, you know, when you look at Nationwide Arena, the Ohio State facilities, and the Chiller facilities, you'd be able to to be able to stage these games. Uh, you know, without any real issue. Uh, it, it's great, got great proximity to a fair number of cities, and you know, not that it's a huge deal, but you know, at the end of the day, Columbus is within 500 miles, or what is it, however many hours, or you know, it's centrally located, I guess, is the easy way to answer that question. So, you know, teams won't have to go far to get there uh, when, when this whole thing kind of restarts. Uh, this is a city, you know, over the last 10 to 15 years that has developed a great reputation of holding major events, uh, whether it be, you know, things like the All-Star Game for the NHL a couple years ago, uh, you know, the, the NCAA Women's Final Four a couple years ago, and I can just keep going on and on there. Uh, you know, this has become a really good big event city, and it knows how to do these things. And then you add in, uh, you know, things like the hotels downtown and, and restaurants and stuff like that. And uh, Columbus has developed a really good reputation for being able to host events like this. And so you add it all up, and, and obviously the, the competence of the Blue Jackets organization as well with, with keeping the arena up the way that it's needed to be kept up and things like that. And, you know, there, there's a lot to be said for uh, what Columbus has to offer now, you know, on a regular basis, but for a special event like this. So we'll, we'll see how it all comes together. But wouldn't surprise me at all if it's Columbus at the end of the day. All righty. Well, Jeff, thank you for taking your time to jump on stream with us, you know, talk through all this obviously new information for return to play. Uh, for those of you guys in chat that haven't been able to tune into the whole stream, we will be downloading the full, our full uh, video on demand, our VOD. We're going to put it on the YouTube channel. We'll tweet out the link 
So make sure you check us out on Twitter at CBJ Gaming. Uh, at Blue Jackets NHL, we'll also have updates. Uh, obviously, with the interviews for Elvis and Zach Wierenski earlier, we're going to be downloading those and putting clips of those on Twitter as well. Uh, so make sure you stay tuned there. Thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll be back soon with some more CBJ Gaming content.